Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. Tighter Insider TV, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. And good evening, everybody. Welcome into another edition of Tighter Insider Television. As uh, mentioned, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Don Staley and his group do a great job promoting tourism and sports here in Tuscaloosa and West Alabama. Alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. And believe it or not, we're less than a week away from SEC Football Media Days. They're back this year. They'll once again be held at the Hyatt Regency Birmingham's Winfrey Hotel in Hoover. Uh, that's the best location for them as far as I'm concerned. Alabama will have its session on Wednesday. Head coach Nick Saban Wednesday morning, actually, and the Tide players will speak and deal with questions like how do you follow up last season's perfect season and national championship? Better hat to have that question than the one that awaits Georgia coach Kirby Smart, Texas A&M coach Jimbo Fisher, and Ole Miss head coach Lane Kiffin. Their question is, is this the year that you can finally beat Nick Saban and Alabama? WVA 23 will be in attendance. We'll have a live report next Tuesday from the Winfrey Hotel right here on TITV. Now, Rodney, what is your best guess on which of these hot topics at SEC Media Days will take center stage? Name, image, and likeness, expansion of the college football playoff, the NCAA transfer portal, or D other? Well, we got a lot of them. Listen, how about D all of the above? <laughs> I mean, uh, and again, I think you could include that one about when will these other coaches be able to beat Nick Saban, but I think all those would be popular topics. Yeah, as far as the, the NIL, uh, I know the players are going to have been coached, as all these players are, on what to say with these questions that they know they're going to get. I wonder how they handle that. I think they'll be careful to make sure they say, you know, that's something we're excited about and, and we're going to handle that in its proper context. But I imagine all the players will say to a man, the focus will be on football and the team come fall. Oh, yeah, I think so, Gary. I think certainly they'll be well prepped, prepared to, you know, address all of these issues and these questions and they'll uh, have some stock answers, as you know. So, uh, yeah, I think they'll address that very well. And, and I think you're right. The focus will be football. Now, I do want to mention last year, of course, no media days due to the pandemic. And this year, still limited. Uh, normally, we will take from the television station, we'll take five or six people over there. This year, only two credentials. Radio Row, the spacing is going to be different, so there'll be less tables. So even though uh, we are you know, a lot back closer to normal. This is a reminder that we're still not there. And it'll be media days, but you know, Rodney, in the past, they've had 12, 13, 1400 media credentials issued for this event. Be much lower and much smaller than that this year. Yeah, it'll be interesting. You mentioned Radio Road. That's always been jam packed. Uh, obviously, that's going to be limited to some extent. So, uh, it'll be a little bit different, but then again, it's much better than where we were last year. Yeah, and it'll still be fun. Yep. And it's still media days, and it's still kind of the unofficial kickoff to SEC football. Well, now it's time for Coach Talk. We're about two ways, two weeks away from the start of NFL training camps. Now, fans are always excited to see how the rookies look in training camp. Of course, in New England, that's Mac Jones, the quarterback among them. But Patriots fans are also excited to see if running back Damian Harris can pick up where he left off last season. The former Alabama running back kind of quietly rushed for 671 yards and averaged over five yards per carry in just 10 games. Now, just a few weeks ago, Patriots head coach Bill Belichick had high praise for what Harris brings to the running back spot in New England. Yeah, Damian works uh, extremely hard, uh, works at all phases, uh, all aspects of his game. Um, certainly his conditioning and training, uh, the running game, uh, passing game, protection, route running, um, catching the ball. Uh, he's, he's a hardworking kid that's, um, you know, just tries to, to do whatever he can to help the team. And he's got a lot of skill and uh, can contribute in a variety of ways, and, and he's looking to uh, improve and, and upgrade where he is in every area. And here's a stat to give you some context on just how good Harris was last season. He averaged five yards a carry on 137 carries. Of all the running backs with at least 100 carries, the only one that finished with a better yards per attempt average was another former Bama running back. Derrick Henry of the Tennessee Titans. And Rod, he rushed for over 2,000 yards last year, talking about Henry. All right, Harris was a guy here at Alabama. I'm not going to say he was overlooked, 
But I don't know that he was ever appreciated for just how good he was. But he was really, really good. And as I said, I think a lot of people would be surprised to realize that he put those kind of numbers up last year in New England because he did it kind of under the radar. Yeah. Well, you know, Damian obviously came in very highly recruited. Gary he shared the spot here with a lot of different running backs, a lot of outstanding running backs, Josh Jacobs among them and, and others. So, uh, I, you know, again, I, and I know you're saying he had a great career here, and it's good to see him getting off to a uh, – had a great year last year with New England because Damien's a really, uh, as Coach Belichick said, an extremely hard worker. He was a leader mm-hmm. here, and he's, he brings those types of things. And so, once again, you, you mentioned that he had over five yards of carry. You mentioned Derrick Henry was the other. What about all these Bama busts, Gary? Yeah, there are not many of them when you uh, start thinking about it. There's a lot more Bama booms than yeah. busts, right? I can tell you that. That's for sure. All right, let's move along. The 2021 MLB first-year player draft wrapped up today, and it was a busy one the draft was for Alabama baseball. The first night, Sunday, during the competitive ballots round, Wisconsin high school shortstop Noah Miller, who signed with Alabama, was taken at number 36 overall by the Twins. According to MLB.com, Miller's projected signing bonus right around $2 million. So probably unlikely that we will see him here at UA. Then on Monday, four Alabama players were selected. All of them picked before the end of the sixth round. Infielder Peyton Wilson, drafted by the Kansas City Royals, a compensatory selection at the end of the second round. Pitcher Dylan Smith, selected by Detroit early in the third round. In the sixth round, Pitcher Chase Lee was selected by the Texas Rangers. And catcher Sam Prater goes to the Miami Marlins in round six. That is pretty cool. The total number of Alabama baseball players selected in this year's draft, five, as pitcher Tyler Ross was drafted in the 14th round by the Rockies today. Alabama's four picks through the first six rounds are the most by any single Crimson Tide roster in program history. And the total number of Alabama high school uh, signees, we mentioned Miller. Also, uh, today there was another player taken, another signee taken, number uh, pitcher Luke Holman, 20th round pick by the Toronto Blue Jays. He's out of Pennsylvania. Well, Alabama football offensive tackle Evan Neal. Uh, Rodney, you saw this on Twitter yesterday. He posted it. Uh, this is a box jump, split legs, 6'7", 360 pounds is what he's listed at. Uh, that That is remarkable for anybody, but somebody of that size. Rod, this is why many say that he is the best left offensive tackle, even though he's moving from right to left in college football and could be a top five overall draft yeah, well, pick next year yeah. in the draft. I mean, just incredible, Gary. What a phenomenal athlete. To see him do it with such ease, I mean, his explosiveness at 6'7", 360 pounds, uh, just amazing. Yeah, I think he's a top five pick next year as we start to kind of look forward. As you preview it, uh, certainly has a, has a ways to go, but uh, wow. What a player. And he tweeted at uh, David Ballou and Matt Ray, the strength coaches, always trying to, to one-up myself. I would think that he did exactly that. <laughs> he is some kind of special player. Well, still to come on Tider Insider Television, former Crimson Tide players have been helping the next generation of football players by holding football camps. Plus, Alabama football picked up a huge commitment last week, keeping the top-rated recruit in the state at home for college. Stick around to see how it impacts the tide. And we'll be getting to your phone calls, emails, and tweets. As always, the phone number 205-348-WVOA. That's 205-348-9882. You can email us at the address on your screen, TITV at WVOA23.com. Or if you'd rather tweet at us, use that hashtag TITV so that we will see it. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV returns right after this timeout. I'm home. <laughs> oh, Happy birthday. Welcome back to Tider Insider Television, sponsored by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. And alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. It appears that the top in state football recruit will remain in Alabama, at Alabama, for his college football. Five star defensive end, outside linebacker, edge rusher, whatever you refer to him as, Jermaine Alexander, Jeremiah Alexander, I should say, out of Thompson High School in Alabaster, has found a home in Tuscaloosa. Alexander is the top ranked player out of Alabama for the class of 2022, according to really all the services. And he's also the top ranked edge and the 16th ranked player overall. With the addition of Jeremiah, Alabama now has 10 commits for the class of 2022, including two five stars. In addition to Alexander, Ty Simpson and Emmanuel Henderson are five stars, giving them the 11th ranked class nationally and the third ranked class in the SEC. But that's going to change as the year progresses. We expect Alabama to move up even more, Rodney. But Alexander is an in-state guy. And again, Alabama recruits nationally. We talk about this often on TV and on radio, but getting the top-ranked player in the state is always a priority for Nick Saban, and he's done it again. Yeah, 
It has to be. And, you know, Gary, again, it was a it was a contested battle. I mean, Clemson really recruited him hard. Todd Bates, former Alabama player, now their defensive line coach, did an outstanding job of recruiting Jeremiah Alexander. So there was a lot of competition. It wasn't just Clemson, Georgia, several other top programs around the country. But like you said, a, a great pickup, Gary, number one player in the state, one of the top 20 players overall in the country. Outside linebacker, you look at him physically. Uh, he's got a lot to work with. And uh, outstanding player. Comes from a great program. Coach Mark Freeman does a tremendous job there. I think it certainly prepares kids for the next level, and I think it's a, uh, that in itself too is a big, uh, I, th I think, a big factor, key factor in terms of his development there and uh, what he'll bring to Tuscaloosa. And Ron, even though Alabama pretty much sells itself at this point, still a guy like this builds recruiting momentum for you. Absolutely, uh, uh, Gary. I think so, certainly, and there's still some other guys in the state that they're recruiting. And, uh, you know, sometimes this, this thing certainly can be a momentum-type effect to it. And uh, so we'll see how that goes. But, again, you mentioned Alabama now has three five-star players and several other elite players that they're in on around the country. I think when all is said and done, this is going to be another great Alabama recruiting class. All right. Uh, on the camp circuit, Alabama Alum Bo Scarborough spent the weekend giving back to his hometown. The Tuscaloosa native hosted his showdown in T-Town Football Clinic this past Saturday at Central High School. The clinic hosted footballers ages 7 to 18 and also welcomed back some former Alabama football players and NFL guys too, including Ronnie Clark and Alphonse Taylor. Good to see Scarborough, who attended Northridge and Tuscaloosa County High. And also Devontae Smith. How about that? Uh, you know, he won an SB for Best College Athlete on Saturday night. Sunday, he was in Homewood hosting his camp. Two sessions there. And there's A.J. McCarron down in Mobile for his annual camp. For all these young people to get an opportunity to work with these uh, former Alabama stars and NFL guys is so cool. Uh, A.J. had 550 campers. Uh, so his uh, has really gotten big down there in Mobile. Of course, he's now a quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. Well, still to come on Tider Insider Television, one former Crimson Tide star is honored at the SP Awards. I kind of gave it away, but we'll fill you in on the details coming up a little bit later on in the program. And next, we'll welcome your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Call us with your questions or comments at 205-348-9882. Email us or tweet at us as well. Tider Insider TV will return from right here in Titletown, Tuscaloosa, Alabama right after this. Well, I let the cat out of the bag a little bit, but Devontae Smith added another award to his trophy case on Saturday night as he was named the best male college athlete at the ESPYs this past weekend. The Heisman Trophy winner was against Clemson football's Trevor Lawrence, Iowa basketball player Luke Garza, and Oregon State soccer player Gloria Mata. But uh, it was uh, Amanda, I should say, but it was Devante that brought it home. All right, welcome back into the program, and let's uh, head out now on the uh, hotline and welcome in Philip down in Jacksonville, Florida. Hey, Philip. Hey, how y'all doing today, Gary? Doing well. Well, I don't, want, I don't have any really comments or questions. I just want to. Uh, I left Alabama after school in the mid '60s, and uh, thank God for Tyler and Sider being able to keep up with the tide. Cool. And just want to thank Rodney for having that website keeping us surprised at what's going on. And believe it or not, you see a lot of Alabama people and tags down here in Jacksonville. They think a lot of the Tide. <laughs> yeah, hey, Philip. first of all, thank you. We appreciate that and uh, certainly appreciate your call. And, uh, yeah, Gary, you know, hey, Alabama recruits down in that area. Mm -hmm. They've got some Heavily. players. Yeah, there's a heavy following down there, certainly, Philip. Hey, thank you for the phone call, Philip, and for the, the uh, compliments for TiderInsider.com. You're right, Ronnie does an unbelievable job. All right, let's get to an email. Uh, what is the status of linebacker King Makuda, uh, Jim in Pell City? Ronnie, he is in the transfer portal, but is there a chance he could return to Alabama? Yeah, I, I think there's a good chance, actually. Uh, you know, we'll see how it all plays out, but my understanding is King is still participating in all the, the team. Uh, and I say team, Gary. A lot of these workouts are voluntary, the seven-on-seven, seven, whatever it is. Of course, they're doing, uh, you know, Dr. Uh, Ray and Matt, uh, Dr. Ballou or David Ballou are, are certainly putting them through the summer workouts. And uh, King, I understand, is still participating in those. He's still here in Tuscaloosa, so... Uh, I think there's a, clearly a chance that he could return, yes. All right, thanks for the email there from Pell City. All right, let's get to Reg on the uh, phone line over in Birmingham. Hey, Reg. Hello, guys, Gary and Rodney. Let me ask you, I noticed in the spring practice football game this year, 
there was very little running game. It looked to me like they, they were. I know they were concentrating on the quarterbacks, but how do you fellas think that our running game will stack up compared to the last year's? Yeah, Reg, uh, I think they'll have a really good running game. Now, listen, you're losing Najee Harris, who's the all-time leading rusher in the history of the program, so um, he'll be difficult to replace. But they got good backs, and I do think they probably went a little pass heavy, uh, particularly with the new offense and getting Bryce Young acclimated. But I think they're going to. They're going to run the football well, Rodney. It'll start with Brian Robinson, probably as the starter, but there's a whole host of backs that can that can carry it. Yeah, they really do. I, and a lot of people ask, is it, will there be a Najee Harris this year, a guy that carries a load? And I, I, Look, I think Brian Robinson's been around, certainly. He's a quality back, and I think he's going to get his opportunities. But I'm with you, Gary. I think there's going to be more of a uh, by-committee type uh, approach this year. And, again, that's not – necessarily taking anything away from Brian Robinson, but when you have a, a stack of backs like they have, you know, Jace McClellan, Roy Dell Williams, hopefully Trey Sanders will be, you know, back close to uh, 100%. So, and, and there are some others. I, I think when you have these quality running backs, uh, you certainly it's good to be able to utilize them all, utilize their different skills, get them all implemented into your uh, game plan. So I think you're going to see, Reg, a lot of different running backs participate this year. All right, Reg, thanks for the phone call. Still to come on Tider Insider Television, Alabama Softball uses the transfer portal to pull away a key player from an SEC rival. More on that coming up. And more of your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, there's the information on the screen on how you can get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. we got uh, phone lines open for the next segment on Tider Insider TV. Well, Tennessee softball catcher Allie Shipman announced last Wednesday that she's transferred to Alabama for her final two years of eligibility. She spent three years with Lady Vols. She's one of the best catchers in the country. I mean, this is a huge pickup for Alabama. She can hit. She's great behind the dish. Just a really superb play player. And uh, she said that uh, on Twitter that she couldn't wait to get to work. She thanked the coaches at the University of Alabama. She uh, should be the replacement for All-ACC catcher and player of the year, Bailey Hemphill who completed her eligibility last season. Also, Ohio State infielder Ashley Prang had previously announced that she was transferring to Alabama, and UA officially welcomed both players uh, to campus on Twitter today. Two really big pickups from the SEC and the Big Ten for team number 26, Patrick Murphy, and Alabama softball. All right, let's head back out to the phone lines, Rod. Our good friend Bill Taylor, BT, is with us here in uh, Tuscaloosa. Hey, Bill. Hi, Gary. How are you doing? Doing well. Uh, how about you, Ronnie? Doing well, Big T. How are you? Doing good. Good. Uh, uh, how you think, uh, Gary and Ronnie, how you all think the basketball team's going to do this year, or what, what can we expect on the team? All right, BT, they're going to be talented, uh, really talented, but going to lose a lot. I mean, you lose three senior starters and Herb Jones, John Petty, and, and Jordan Bruner. Uh, then you lost Josh Primo, and I really didn't expect when he went into the draft that he would remain there, but he got such good reviews. He's going to be a first-round pick. And Jaden Shackelford's status is still up in the air. He's in the transfer portal. I'm hearing there's still a chance he might return. Oh, I think it's most likely that he's going to leave. So uh, they're going to be talented, but it's going to be really pretty much a new team, Rod. Yeah, it is. You know, And, again, I, I think, listen, I think Nate Oates has recruited extremely yes. well, obviously. So I think a lot of – Again, you're talking about experience. That's always a key factor. But, you know, I, I think where he is right now, Gary, uh, I really expect with the talent he, he's brought in as quickly as he's molded things, uh, has molded this program together. I think Alabama would be pretty good, BT. It, it'll be very interesting. And you talked about Shackelford, Gary. And, again, I know there's been some reports that he's definitely gone. And I'm with you. I understand there's still a chance he could come back. It may be small. But uh, I, I think if he really – if he did come back, it'd be a really big, uh, you know, really big deal because I think obviously his experience and his ability would be, you know, huge for this team. Yeah, it'd be a lot of young talent, but a uh, number of unproven players. But they'll be the kind of team I think that'll get better as the year goes along. But it'll be fun to watch them. This this team, this program under NATO, so they play fast, they play fun basketball, so should be exciting. All right, let's go down to Maplesville and uh, hook up with Keith. Keith, how are you? Doing well, Gary. How are you? Doing very well, thank you. I uh, hope, hope you're doing well, Rodney. Uh, I'm doing well. Okay, thank you. Pick your, pick your brain a little bit and see if you can remember back. I know you've been with the Tide a long time. When's the last time that we've had a kicker like Will Rockard get recognized before the season 
like a second team or uh, all ACC selection or that second team all American. Is it all the way back to Van Tiffin? Was he recognized that way? And I just think it's exciting to finally have a kicker that way and roll tide. Well, I mean, you're looking at me first. I'm trying to think right on my Maybe brain. Maybe Michael Proctor. Le well, uh, Tiffin. Lee Tiffin was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, he was pretty good. Uh, he certainly was very good, I thought, especially latter part of his career. Uh, you mentioned Michael Proctor. Um, you know, but the, the again, pre season All America, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm not sure. But it's been a while. The Rocker's a good one. He's a real good one. Uh, it's funny, he had the trouble in the 8A game. People got worked up, but I mean, the guy's been perfect last year. What was he, 14 to 14 yeah. on his field goals? So, and all yeah, extra points, too. Top notch kicker. All right, uh, thanks for the phone call from there, Maplesville. But you're right, it's been a while since Alabama's had a kicker going into the season they felt this good about. All right, this is an email from Lawrence in Hamilton. Is Evan Neal the most talented offensive tackle that Saban has had? And uh, we've talked about him earlier. Uh, he's got to be in the conversation, Rodney. And there's been some really good ones. I think we talked about this on the radio show. But uh, Evan Neal's in the conversation. Yeah, you can rattle them off. Of course, when, when Saban, Nick Saban got here, he had Andre, Andre Smith, Smith and obviously, him. and then you know Jonah Williams was a great player. Cam Robinson, Cam Robinson was a fabulous Alex player. Leatherwood. You've had some tremendous players at that position. Jonah Williams, I don't know if I mentioned him, but uh, so he, he, again, Evan Neal is, is obviously a, a tremendous player. Uh, is he the best? And I really don't know about that, but he certainly all those guys for, basically were first round draft picks, so I, I think he'll go that high as well. All right, thanks for all the phone calls and emails tonight. Always good to hear from Tider Insider Nation, and we'll be back to wrap up this edition of TITV right after this. Alabama football's Pierce Quick finds a hometown partner through NIL. The former Hewitt Trustful Husky has a deal with the Birmingham area business Meals by Misty, a takeout ready-to-heat food vendor. Quickly announced, or Quick announced, the partnership on social media last week describes Meals by Misty as home-cooked meals with having to cook ahead a ringing endorsement for a member of the Alabama offensive line and uh, big. Yeah, so I, he, I could use some of Misty's meals. Yeah, she, she can get you, get you healthy, that's for sure. All right, well, that is going to do it for the program. Thanks for tuning in to Tider Insider TV, presented by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. And don't forget, if you missed any of tonight's show, you can catch a replay tonight at 10.30, following the news at 10, or online anytime at WVOA23.com. We'll leave with highlights from this past weekend. Former Crimson Tide quarterback Blake Sims stepping up big in his indoor football league debut for Spokane. He ran for... Three touchdowns and threw for another to lead the Spokane Shock to win over Sioux Falls. For Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Thanks for watching. Good night.